गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट टुडे वी लर्न अबाउट द रिनल एबनॉर्मेलिटीज इन एस्टरडेज लेक्चर हुई आप हुई आर डिस्कस अबाउट द एजोटोमिया एंड हुई आर लर्न अबाउट कैलकुलेटिंग द इस्टिमेटेड जी एफ आर वेन यू सी द इलिवेशन इन द प्लाज्मा क्रिटिन इन दैन बाय दैट वे वी कैन कैलकुलेट द इजी एफ आर एंड वी कैन इस्टिमेट uh the glomerular function rate from that so second uh, wh what we need to discuss is proteinuria and cast so in the, in, uh, in this lecture i am going to tell you about something about the proteinuria how we are going to estimate the proteinuria and how we are going to approach a patient with proteinuria okay so normally uh, as you know normally as you know this is the glomerulus glomerul sorry this is the normally this is the bowman's capsule and there is this is the glomerulus there is a podocytes these are the glomerulus so normally uh, uh from the blood uh, so protein cannot escape from the uh, this uh, glomerular apparatus because uh, there is a tight endothelial junction as well as there is a uh, podocytes in uh, podocytes lining the bowman's capsule so the protein in the blood cannot uh, usually do not escape usually large protein do not escape from the uh, glomerulus uh, to the to the tubules uh but only the small protein uh can escape but those small protein then again reabsorb through the tubules that's why normally we don't see much protein in the urine uh another uh, mechanism why we do not see the protein in the urine is that uh, like albumin albumin is a negatively charged compound and even the our podocytes are negatively charged so there will be the repulsion uh repulsion uh, repulsive action against the albumin so that uh, that is why albumin cannot come to uh, towards the tubules so because of the uh, size of the protein and electric electrostatic charges usually the large protein cannot come to the tubules only the small protein can come to the tubules but those protein get reabsorbed in the uh tubules but there are some proteins which is secreted by the tubules the classical one is tam horsfall protein tam horsfall protein it is the protein which is uh, like secreted by the tubules and take uh, secreted by the tubules and there are other small proteins like uh, urokinase uh, which can come to the urines that's why in the urine that's why in the urine what you see we see the very minimal amount of the protein minimal amount of protein in urine so what is that amount so the urine do so we see less than 150 mg uh, per day protein protein in 24 urine sample we just see the 150 mg of the protein and that is 30 mg of per day albumin so albumin normal albumin that we can see in the urine is less than 30 mg per day and it's, it is usually undetectable we cannot detect that much of albumin and protein in the urine so this is the normal amount of the protein that you will see in the urine but if there is more proteinuria proteinuria and then when we will see the proteinuria so if there is a problem in the in the tubules if the there is a problem in the glomerulus like glom glomerulus or if there is a problem in the tubules or or, or if there is excessive protein sec protein formation in our system like in case of multiple myeloma uh, protein formation then in this scenario we see the protein uh in the urine so we see the protein in the urine especially if there is a glomerular disease or if there is a tubular disease um or there is excessive protein formation in our system only then we see the protein that's why if you see the protein in your urine 
then that usually suggests the disease of glomerulus or tubules like that okay that's why uh, when you see the protein uh, we should always be aware about uh, about this condition so what is the normal protein that you will see in the urine the normal protein that uh, is excreted in the urine is less than 150 milligram per 24 hour or per day and albumin is less than 30 milligram in 24 hour that is the normal protein or albumin excreted in the urine clear okay then how we can we can estimate estimate the uh, pro al protein and our uh, protein in the urine by four techniques deep stick one is deep stick another one is the we can do the 24 hour urine collection and see urine collection and we can do the uh, spot urine albumin creatinine ratio creatinine ratio 24 urine protein protein so deep stick normally in a in a routine clinical practice we just do the deep stick but remember student deep stick only can detect the albumin albumin concentration concentration so if there is a proteinuria other than that uh, that uh, other than albumin uh, like in case of multiple myeloma there is light chain proteinuria this type of protein cannot be de detected by the deep stick technique because it can only detect the albumin that's why sometimes uh, it is not reliable okay so this is one of the mcq question deep stick can only detect the albumin and some it, it is it detect the concentration so if your urine is diluted if it, urine is diluted then it can uh, underestimate the albumin present in the urine okay okay because it is diluted urine and it is assessing the concentration so it can underestimate the albumin urea in the urine and second is if the if the your urine is concentrated concentrated then it can show high value concentrated then you you, you can see say the uh, see the high value or if it is mixed with the blood okay if it is concentrated urine if it is a blood mixed urine then in even in that scenario uh, you can give the false positive uh, positive false positive uh, for the albuminuria so deep stick is not reliable in this scenario and uh, we need to quantify the uh, uh, protein present in the urine so in most of the place what people are doing is that they collect the urine for 24 hour duration from 8 am today to 8 am tomorrow that became 24 hour so in a in a jar just tell them to collect to tell your patient to uh, void the urine before 8 am today you collect all the urine in a in a jar up uh, and then you bring the jar tomorrow morning and then it became 2 liter 3 liter of urine and from that urine you can uh, exactly estimate the protein present in that urine uh, urine so that uh, you can see what is the level of protein over there so in this scenario uh, to collect the urine in a jar and to uh, carry that urine from home to hospital is sometimes it is cumbersome process and like not uh, uh, like uh, it is not like uh, wanted by the patient uh, party so for that scenario what you can do you can do spot urine and albumin creatinine ratio where you give the uh, single urine sample and you detect the uh, symbol single urine sample and you you uh, calculate the albumin and creatinine in that sample in that sample and you calculate you, you, calcu you calculate the ratio of albumin to creatinine ratio in the urine urine albumin to creatinine ratio so it is equivalent to um, time, um, it is equivalent to uh, 24 hour uh, urine protein urine protein protein uh, in terms of in terms of so if you calculate this acr in milligram per gram uh, then it will be in a milligram in 24 hour 
like this okay suppose uh, you have calculate the uh, spot urine albumin creatinine ratio uh, 350 milligram per gram um, creatinine then it is it is equal to 300 milligram of protein in 24 hour sample so sometimes uh, you can only give a single sample and you can calculate the albumin and creatinine ratio from that you can even estimate uh, the what is the 24 urine protein uh, of that patient so it is quite easy for the patient uh, okay so these are the tests and this facility is also available at BPKHS and we are doing when you are approaching a patient with proteinuria so uh, after uh, knowing the techniques of proteinuria uh, I will just talk briefly about uh, the proteinuria so if you see the pro uh, albumin of if you see so your albumin in urine albumin in urine Albumin in urine, a 24-hour sample, 24-hour sample, okay, 24-hour sample, if it is uh, th less than 30 is normal, 300 to 300 milligram in 24-hour or uh, 300 to 3500 milligram in 24-hour or more than 300 a milligram in 24 hour sample or if you this is for the 24 hour if you calculate the albumin creatinine ratio then it come 30 to 300 mg uh, per gram or 30 to 300 to 3500 per mg per gram and it is if it is 3500 uh, per gram so if uh, uh, albumin uh, excreted in the urine is, is between 30 to 300 then you will uh, label this condition as called microalbuminuria microalbuminuria okay and if you if you see this type of protein then it is called the macroalbuminuria albuminuria and if you see this type of thing, this is this is called the uh, nephrotic range proteinuria a uh, gross proteinuria nephrotic range proteinuria so in this way uh, we can divide the uh, proteinuria you can divide the proteinuria um, of your patient so after estimating the urine so if it is uh, in bit like like you when you estimate the urine by acr or 24 urine sample it becomes 150 mg then you can say there is microalbuminuria. If it is 450, then you can say macroalbuminuria. If it is uh, more than 3500 or 3500mg, then you can say nephrotic range proteinuria. And causes for the uh, these conditions are different. Like as microalbuminuria, one of the important causes uh, initial stage of diabetes and hypertension. Uh, you can see the microalbuminuria. Uh, whether macro and nephrotic range proteinuria, you will see in different renal disease as well as non-renal disease. But we have to know it. Okay. So this is how we approach the patient with proteinuria and accordingly you have to work up. Okay, accordingly you have to work up. Okay, so thought proteinuria, I will wrap up here because we will have uh, another class in the uh, glomerular disease and tuber interstitial disease then you will know uh, when you uh, um, when we have a lecture in the topic. So uh, for albuminuria, so again I will uh, revise. Okay. So normally what is the normal albumin excreted in the urine it is less than 30 milligram what is normal protein excreted in the urine less than 150 mg okay uh, then what are the techniques on a deep stick technique you can do 24 urine collection you can do you can estimate the albumin by creatinine ratio in the urine okay then we have to divide the proteinuria into three parts whether it is mic microalbuminuria macroalbuminuria or nephrotic range proteinuria okay then we will move to the uh, 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 RVC and the cast. So in case of the RVC, uh, if you see the RVC in the urine, if you see the RVC in the urine, uh, uh, I'll just tell a briefly about, about the RVC, okay. I don't tell much about the RVC. If you see 2 to uh, 5 RVC uh, per high power field, then it is called hematuria. 
okay it is called hematuria and you have to evaluate the hematuria but uh, but you can see sometimes uh, hematuria it may be because of the benign conditions but if you see uh, more than three uh, rvc uh, in three occasion three occasion occasion or more than 100 rvc in uh, single occasion single occasion or this is there is a gross hematuria gross hematuria then it then it is called the significant hematuria okay then it is called a significant hematuria and you need to evaluate uh, those patients who have these conditions okay if there is a more than three rbc in three occasion or more than 100 rbc in single or single occasion or if there is a gross hematuria then you need to evaluate such patient carefully because it may be the manifestation of different uh, renal or ureteric or uh, bladder disease okay for the rbc so in the rbc i i i don't want to miss one thing so sometimes the rbc size may be changed in the urine uh, in the microscopy that change rbc is called dysmorphic rbc so this when you see the dysmorphic rbc usually dysmorphic rbc is seen by the fast contrast microscopy this is one of the mcq question fast contrast microscopy it usually suggests the glomerular disease it is usually suggests the glomerular disease so when you see the RBC in the urine, uh, you have to see whether it is a hematuria or not, either whether microscopic hematuria or not, whether it is significant or not, and whether there is a presence of dysmorphic RBC or not. So if there is isolated hematuria, then you have to think about uh, the conditions like uh, like uh, isolated uh, IgA nephropathy or because of stone or because of neoplasm. If it is mixed with the WBC, then you have to think about the conditions uh, like uh, pyuria. Okay. Then we will go to the cast. In the cast, so cast is nothing uh, like uh, cast. What is cast? Cast is like uh, like the, the it is the piling of of this uh, of the proteins piling of the of the proteins and uh, giving a solid structure like this. This is called the cast. And normally this cast is uh, made up in the urine by the Tom Horsfall protein. Tom Horsfall protein. Tom Horsfall protein. And the name of this cast that we see normally is the hyaline cast. Hyaline cast. Hyaline cast. Okay. So normally what you see in the urine is the hyaline cast. Hyaline cast. Okay. This is make, made of a protein uh, which are secreted by the tubules. If within this cast you see the, there is a RBC. If you, within this cast there is RBC. RBC over here. Then that is called RBC cast. You see in case of different glomerular disease. If you see uh, there is a WBC, then that is called the WBC cast. Within this protein, if there is a WBC, then they got WBC cast and usually indicative of uh, disease like pyelonephritis. So, cast, what is cast? It's just a piling up of the protein and giving solid structure. Okay, and in the normally in urine, you will see the cast called hyaline cast. It is made up, it is made up of Thomas fat protein. If within the Tom Asphalt protein there is a collection of the RBC that is called RBC cast and if there is a collection of WBC that is called WBC cast. Uh, sometimes in case of CKD that is one of the MCQ questions you can see the collection of the broad cells okay broad cells that is called the broad cast in case of CKD broad cast this is one of the MCQ question for you. So th this is how we need to evaluate the different cast in the urine RME analysis. So, uh, so let us revise it again. So, when you see the protein in the urine, we need to estimate the protein by dipstick technique, 24 urine protein or uh, spot uh, urine albumin creatinine ratio. Uh, that is, uh, we, whichever is required, you can do that test. Okay, and we, we have to approach accordingly. In case of RBC, uh, if there is 2 to 5 RBC, then it's a hematuria. But if there is a gross hematuria, if there is a more than 100 RBC in singles or uh, single sample, then it is significant hematuria. Then we need to work up those cases as well. 
in a similarly cast iron cast we usually see in the urine and sometimes in case of the glomerular disease we will see the rbc cast and in case of a uh, infective infection infective conditions like pyelonephritis we see the wbc cast okay for today i'll wrap up the session if you have any question then you can write in a comment section thank you